Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. It's a blessed day that the Father has granted us. We are so glad that uh, we have a day, and this day is not going to pass by just like that. Rather, we'll grow, we'll take advantage of it, we'll increase in our understanding and knowledge in the revelation of God, in the revelation of ourselves, in the revelation of what we all to know. See, do you know that there are... Uh, this forbidden knowledge, things that we're not supposed to know, and the things which you're supposed to know, the things which you're supposed to know will bring life, the things which you're not supposed to know will bring death. Okay, so there's something about the revelation of Christ, the revelation of the gospel, what it will do to you. You see, man is more than a physical uh, being, is more than a physical being, and so since man is complex, you cannot uh, help man by uh, physical stuff, okay? Even if you do what, whatever you are trying to do, that will never satisfy man. And that is not, uh, it, it, it makes no difference. It doesn't matter whether you're a woman or a man, because you see, man and woman and women are the same in, in a sense that uh, they are never fulfilled until uh, the source of uh, their fulfillment is revealed. And the source of our fulfillment, or the fulfillment is, is what? Is God. God is your source. And since God is your source, you can only be fulfilled through him, by him. Glory to Jesus. Oh, precious Lord. And so we've been talking about joy. I'm telling you, this is, this is marvelous. You know, all these things that come from God, again, that are produced by God, they carry God in themselves. And that's what makes them special. They talk about joy, talk about love, talk about mercy, and so on and so forth. We we'll talk about a lot of things from God, and we're still talking about the same thing. Only that we are trying to give more light on, uh, shed more light on different things that we thought we knew. But in the light of the gospel, these things become marvelous, and they are so special. Now, chapter 16 of the book of Psalms, verse 10 and 11. Let me read 10 for you will not leave my soul in Sheol. No, you, you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Now look at verse 11. So you will show me the path of life. And I'm talking about joy here. I never saw it. Before I couldn't see it this way, you see. I didn't see it this way, but you see, as you go grow in the Lord, you discover a lot. Especially when you're focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, you discover Jesus Christ is everything. Remember here is a psalm that is prophesying the Messiah. So imagine this is one of the messianic prophecies. 
Alright, and who is Jesus Christ? Jesus is everything. So, is he joy? Yes. So, okay, let's talk about him. He says, you will show me the path of life. So, what... One of the things that joy will do is show you the path of life. Let me let me explain again. I'm giving a good example of, of Adam and Eve. You know, sometimes you just reason and think and imagine what happened. And by the Spirit of God, you, you begin to see pictures and images of what really happened. For example, the, and that they make sense. Um, for instance, when uh, Adam and Eve were chased out of Eden, I talked about it. Now, think about this. If you had this beautiful life, you're enjoying, I mean, this marvelous, heavenly, divine, sweet life in terms of the spiritual, in terms of the physical, you are lacking nothing everywhere. You are complete. You are happy. You are, you know, and all of a sudden something happens and everything disappears. Not only disappearing, you realize that you have lost your house because they used to stay in that in Eden. So they lost their home, they lost their their riches because all the riches were there in Eden. They so they lost all their riches. They lost their protection because they were protected in there. They lost their uh, the way they used to work. They were resting and so they were tilling the ground. But in Eden, it was beautiful, it was easy, not as it happened when they were cast now that even the ground will bear, you know, uh, some some thorns and, you know, and all things that were said to them after they sinned. Um, okay, think about this. If it was just trying to help you understand what really happened... So imagine you are there, uh, you have your house, you have everything, you have put, uh, you know, uh, everything is in place. I mean, you have no problem and something happens and takes away all things. In fact, you even shift, you go into a strange country, you a strange life, a strange experience, strange, everything is new. You are not used to that, you, you never knew that, you couldn't expect that, now it's there, it's right there. You think it will not stress you out and confuse you and bring about different kinds of feelings and different kinds of, of thoughts and especially negative ones. But think about it. What really happened to Adam and Eve when they were cursed? Can you imagine the kind of life they began to live? That first family, that uh, first uh, being human beings can you imagine now the fight between them continued the quarrel continued everything wasn't working i mean it was so bad you see remember now adam had already said you know eve is a very she's the one who brought uh, uh, the fruit to me and then uh, Eve is also trying to defend herself. He said, no, 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 it's not me. It's about the snake. And I mean, think about the chaos that was going on there. It was a mess. And they were chased out. They had to cover themselves. And God, by mercy, brought some, you know, some, uh, made them some uh, skin and uh, brought it to them, and they uh, they tried to hide their nakedness. They had already began to see the nakedness, what they are lacking, what they are lacking. See now the the consistency of uh, what they lack, uh, the feeling that they they don't have this, they don't have that. You see that kind of life. Now they were also, again, like I said, chased out of that place. Do you think they were really experiencing life at that moment? No way. The life they knew had already gone. They didn't even know the way to life. They didn't know what life was. They didn't know. They were trying to live, but they were not in, they were they were not into life. They didn't know what life is. They were not having the experience of life. They were having an image of something they cannot explain. And you know that many people are like that. But now, 
in this psalm, he reveals something very deep. He says, verse 11, he says, You will show me the path of life. Oh my Jesus. You will show me the path of life. So, joy, remember, when there's the void, when there's no joy, people walk backwards. So instead of thinking positively, they were thinking negatively. Instead of moving forward, they were going backwards. And that's the experience of death. And he uses the word corruption. You see corruption. Everything is dying. Everything is not working. Remember that now trees were growing and then, you know, they begin to to fall, the, the leaves that began to die and falling and innocent uh, animals were dying. I mean, Cain killed the Abel. Abel. And, and imagine, so corruption and corruption and corruption. Corruption began then. So they didn't know the path to life. They didn't know. They didn't know the way to life. They didn't even know the way back to what? To Eden. You know, remember when they were chased out, the, the path to Eden was closed. And there were two angels, cherubims, that were, they were protecting that entrance so that no, they shouldn't come back. So it was, they didn't even know the path to that way. And God is the one who took them out of that place. So which means, and remember even in the beginning, God was the one who took them into Eden is the one who took them in what? In Eden. So they are not the ones who took themselves in Eden. So you don't take yourself in, in Eden. It is God who puts you in Eden. From the beginning, so we see man being brought to Eden. Being brought to that place. So which means God is the way. This is the way. He is the way to Eden. Now, what, do I, what am I saying? You will show me the path of life. Joy will lead you for, from corruption, from Shewu to the way of life. It will produce life in you that you have never known. It will produce what you have never tasted. Remember when Adam died, a lot of things that were operative in Adam died, ceased to, to function. Even what we see man doing today, there are some research that will show you that man is not operating to his full capacity. He's not maximizing his full capacity. Why? Therefore, but there's a path to life. There's so much in man that hasn't come to light. There are certain capacities that are not functioning yet today in man. So if man is also dying today, sometimes our people are so hopeless and they have lost hope and so they have concluded that man is that way. But man is not that way. Man is more than that. And there are things which man will produce that men have not seen yet that are only possible when God is the one doing it. Yes, why? Because man is created in the image of God. And he was supposed to do things to on the caliber of God. And God is not, not, is not scared or even uh, insecure. No, it is his will for man to function like him. So when this happened, man lost his way. So he's saying there is a way back to life. And he's saying it is joy. So he shows me the way back to life. So I will get to know the true life, the true way, path towards life because of joy. So joy will, add, will bring forth things which were dead back to life. And they will begin to work, to function. And you will be so surprised that you are capable of doing this or doing that. There is a certain limitation in the lives of people and they are convinced that they are limited in one or the other. So joy will produce some abilities that only, that only God has because it comes from God. You see, you shall lead me in the path of life. The path of life, Adam didn't know what the path of life. So for me to come back to life, to experience what life is, or you cannot have life void of joy and call it life. Unless joy is in place, otherwise it's not life. Brothers and sisters, something about joy. Shalom, shalom.